Good morning, Glory Carrier. It's your girl, Brittany Jones, and we're back for another morning meditation. First of all, thank you for getting up early in the morning, rising with me so we can talk about the word. Thank you for sharing and thank you for praying for me. Thank you for commenting um, and telling me different things that you want to hear. So we go keep it going. Um, one of the things I have been thinking about lately um, and even going through lately is realizing the power of worship, like literally the power, honestly, of music. You could turn some music on and it is set in atmosphere. Listen, if you're going to have a date night, what you going to make sure you have? Normally some music. At a wedding, <laughs> what are you normally going to hear, especially as the bride is coming in or if they're right before they take their vows or uh, they do the unity candle? There's going to be some music and music has a powerful way of moving us and um, helping us to emote in a positive or sometimes a negative way. And so um, I love the awesome uh, responsibility that I get as a worship leader to lead and encourage people using this tool, but it can be dangerous. <laughs> and we're gonna talk about that today. So I want you to take, get your Bibles, grab your Bibles, grab somebody, and let's go to Daniel chapter three. Daniel chapter three, a familiar scripture. Uh, and uh, chapter, um, we're going to start right at verse one. So it says, King Nebuchadnezzar made a gold statue, 90 feet tall, nine feet wide, set it up in the plain of Dura in the providence of Babylon. He sent messages to the high officers, officials, governors, advisors, treasurers, judges, magistrates, and all the provincial officials to come to the dedication of the statue he had set up. So all the officials came, stood before the king's statue, um, the statue that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. Verse 4, then a herald shouted, people, all people of all races and all nations and all languages, listen to the king's command. Here's where it's starting to get dangerous. When you hear the sound, when you hear the sound of the horn, flute, zither, lyre, harp, pipes, and other instruments, I, you are to bow to the ground and worship the king, King Nebuchadnezzar, and his gold statue. Anyone who refuses to obey will immediately be thrown in the fiery furnace. So all the people, uh, when the sound went forth, Whatever their race or nation or language, they bow to the ground and worship the gold statue that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. Verse 8. But some of the astrologers went to the king and informed on the Jews. They said to the king, King Nebuchadnezzar, long live the king. They come in with some drama. <laughs> you, you issued a decree requiring that all the people bow down and worship the gold statue when they hear the sound of the horn, the flute, the, the, the lyre, the harp, the pipes, and the other musical instruments. And that decree also states that those who don't obey must be thrown into the blazing furnace. But there are some Jews, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, whom you have put in charge of the province of Babylon, and they pay no attention to your decree. They did not worship the golden statue you've set up. So if you have been in church, you've been to uh, Sunday school, <laughs> you've been to uh, VBS, come on VBS, uh, you have heard this story you have heard this passage of scripture and that's why I tell you music can be so powerful check this out King Nebuchadnezzar we know that he uh, was a bad man I mean he was a vile king I did some research on him and King Nebuchadnezzar was so bad that he would take over certain kingdoms he would pluck out the eyes of their leaders he would rip out their tongues and he would nail it to their cheeks Oh, like he was bad. <laughs> and obviously he thought he was a God. And I say that because he was willing to set up a statue, such a big statue, um, you know, 90 feet tall, nine feet wide, just so big for everybody to bow because of how important he was trying to make himself seem, right? However, 
um, the Hebrew boys who, you know, have been taken um, into captivity along with um, with others um, are there and they're in a land, a strange land. God's image is not valued. King Nebuchadnezzar is valued. His decrees are valued. So you got this evil king who is nuts and will kill anybody at a whim, who will say whatever he wants to say, will decree whatever he wants to decree. And you've got the people of Israel who are looking around like, what are we doing in this strange land, in this captivity? Right? So um, I want to remind us here, though, that idols can pop up. Idols. What What do you mean an idol? I'm not talking about a big, you don't have maybe a big 90-foot statue in your room or outside in your front yard. But is there anything, any image um, that distracts or deters or takes your attention away from God? Like this week, I had to check myself. I said, Britt, the very first thing you get up, when I, when I get up, um, I literally scroll on my social media. And I was like, Bro, you ain't even um, say thank you. you when your feet hit the floor, when your eyes woke up, you know, you didn't even grab your Bible. You, nothing, none of that, just scrolling. And I was thinking, some of you might say, well, like, Britt, that's kind of extreme, but it's taking my attention. And for many of us know, sometimes we get on, we'll get on social media and we'll say, I'm just going to be on here five minutes and then it'll be an hour later. <laughs> and all these things, all these priorities we have have now gotten out the way. And so we just have to be aware and conscious of things that are distracting to purpose, uh, distraction, uh, distraction to our time, distraction to our talents, things that would slowly creep in and become idols. Now, normally if they're 90 foot tall and nine foot wide, it's something that we've been nurturing and feeding over time um, to the point that, oh, I don't have time to read my Bible. I gotta make sure. And you might not say that, but your time shows that. And so I want us to be aware that sometimes, even in the strange se season we're in now, that we're aware of idols that try to creep up. All right. Now, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, um, whose names have been changed, by, by the way, I, had, I heard a preacher that was <laughs> he preaching and he was calling their, their uh, Hebrew names. And I was like, who is he talking about? <laughs> what is Because we always call them by their slave names. But um, these men um, decided not to, of course, we know about the statue. We're going to get to that in a second. Even if you're in a secular situation, if you are anointed, your response should be different. All right. So first things first, they we know it as the Daniel's fast. They weren't eating what the king's men were eating. They were already trying to set themselves apart. So even when this came, they set themselves up to live in counter cultural ways. I want to really deem today's topic stand-up worship because everything that we do should be counter-cultural. If we're trying to blend in, if we're trying to be a chameleon, if we're trying to get the likes and the, and the followers and all the things, then we're not standing up and standing out. And that is what God has called us to do. That's what holiness is. That's what sanctification means, is that we are set apart. All right. So, of course, we know the decree goes out. Every time the music plays, I don't know what the music sounded like, but just, just for kicks and giggles, every time the music plays, the flute, the zither, all of those things, everyone is supposed to bow when you hear the sound. My question to you is what sound do you bow to? Once again, it goes back to that idol. What is something that um, takes your time, takes your attention, um, divides you? Why do I say that? If it's fear, then that can start to, it starts as just a thought, and then it capitalizes on your time. And then it paralyzes you to not do things that you might be called to do, that you know that you ought to do. What do you bow to? Maybe it's low self-esteem. It starts out, once again, as a thought. And then, oh, I can't, or I shouldn't, or, or I can't do it as good as they do. Then we start comparing. What sound do you bow to? All right. 
Um, the thing about music it is, is it's so subtle it, that it gets to us without we even, we even know it. Um, and so the king was, was smart here. He appealed to their ears and their eyes. Um, so <laughs> it, no matter what, they knew it was coming and it was subtle enough to try to get them moving. All right, we almost done, but I want to talk about these awesome, the awesome response of the Hebrew boys, right? So when, if you keep on going down, we stopped around like verse 12, but if you keep on going down, one, I, one of the most, I don't know, I guess prolific is the best way for me, um, things that I saw from the Hebrew boys is when they said, you know, King Nebuchadnezzar, because he gave them a chance um, after they were told on by the astrologers. Now, check this out. If everybody's supposed to be bowing and everybody's supposed to like literally bow. So like from the waist down and their heads down. How did the astrologers see the Hebrew boys not bowing? OK, I just wanted to ask that question because sometimes folks just be <laughs> folks be checking for you and you're like, you were supposed to be. OK, that's a whole that's a whole nother message. But the Hebrew boys, when uh, the astrologers told on them, they're brought to the king's court. Uh, they come in. Right. And the king says, I'm going to give you another chance. You know, I'm going to play the music again and you get a chance to bow. And they said, uh, hey, king, uh, we don't know if our God is going to deliver us. But even if he doesn't deliver us, we know that he's able. And we're still not going to bow. Y'all, I was just thinking about right now, oftentimes, even as saints, we are apt and willing and excited and will praise when it comes to knowing the outcome. When it comes to, okay, this is the promise that God has given me, so this is going to be my response. But what if God doesn't give you a response? What if he doesn't give you a promise? Will you still be obedient? Because the truth of the matter is, they could have gone in the fire, they could have perished. We know that did not happen. But just on the faith that God was able to deliver, they didn't bow. So just on the faith that God is able to heal, what's your response? Just on the faith that God is able to bring us through this pandemic, what is your response? Just on the faith that God is able to make a way for you, what's your response? Just on the faith that God is able to sustain your family, what is your response? Will you stand up and worship? Reason why I wanted to call it stand up is because there could have been a, a few different responses. They could have, all right, I'm not going to stand, but how about I just kind of take a knee? Because then I'm kind of like kind of bowing, but I'm not completely bowing. Or some of us would have said, all right, I'm a bow, but in my heart, I'm really standing up. <laughs> right? <laughs> but these Hebrew boys, they were like just as bad as Nebuchadnezzar was. He, they were saying, we're going to be just as bad and just as bold, just as uh, confident in the God that we serve. And we're going to completely stand. Let's not take a knee. Let's not be saved in our hearts and nobody can tell on our social media. <laughs> Unless I'm, I'm saved on Sundays, but nobody can tell Monday through Saturdays. Let's completely stand up and completely stand out because right now, just like the Hebrew boys, we are in a strange land, a strange season, a strange time. And if all of us stand up, if all the saints of God, if all of Zion, if all the children of the Most High decided to, you know what? I'm going to stand up. I'm going to believe whether or not I know what the outcome is going to be. I'm going to praise whether or not I know how he's going to bring me out. I'm going to trust just based on the fact of his track record. How different would our world, our nation be? I want to encourage you, glory carrier, stand up. Worship is the only way to go. So glory carrier, if we're going to stand up worship, that means we got to be willing to say, Lord, I choose you above anything else. Hey, 
yeah there's nobody like you no one heals like you do that's why i call you oh and there's nobody like you no one redeems like you do and that's why i call you Yo. So these are our words. You're one of the kind. You're the love of my life, and I'm so glad to call you mine. <laughs> Cause you're all you are, you're all I need. Yes, God. And I'm so glad to call you mine. You're mine. And I'm yours. Hey. Lord, you're mine. Lord, you're my, you're my God. You're my, you're my God. So help me say, I choose you. Say, oh, I choose you. Say, yo. Hey, I choose you, oh God. Hey, I choose you. Say I. Whoa, there's nobody like you. No one says like you do. That's why I call you. Yes, I do, and there's nobody like you. No one Bristol is like you do. Ooh, that's what I call you. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. You're one of a kind, the love of my life. By now, you should be rocking in your seat saying, You're all I need. Yes, God. Hey, and I'm so glad to call you mine. You're mine. And I'm yours. You're all I need, all I need to get by. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey. And I choose you, oh God. Say I, I won't bow to any other sound but your word. Say I, 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 I choose you above anything else, above anyone else, God. Yeah, hey, I will obey, I will obey your word. I choose to believe. Believe your word, and I choose to follow you wherever you want me to go. I choose to have joy, and I choose to have peace. I choose to have happiness. I choose to be free. I choose to love, and I choose to forgive. I choose you. I choose the King of Kings and I choose the Lord of Lords. I, I choose you. I, yeah, 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 yeah. I choose you. Yeah, yeah. I choose to stand up. I choose to worship. I choose to be countercultural. I choose, no matter what, you, God. You know what, Glory Carrier? I pray that no matter what, you will stand up and worship, that you would live a holy, set-apart life, that you will trust that even if he doesn't do it, he's still worthy. Yes, God. That even if he doesn't fix it, he's still king. Even if he decides to mend or restore or heal and it's different from what you thought he is still able to do exactly what you thought and more we just got to trust his plan 
I hope you have enjoyed today. I hope you dance a little bit. That's really what I wanted. <laughs> I hope that sound really gave you something to encourage you. Uh, that song is actually on our Broken for a Blessing record. If you haven't, if you don't have it, check it out. And um, if you hadn't already, subscribe today because we want you to get in where you fit in on every Wednesday at 8 a.m. when we are encouraging people and just talking about Jesus and having a good time. All right. If nothing else, I love you and I will see you next Wednesday. We out.